full power tests of the second version of the DIY electric turbo. Let's do it. As you notice, this second version is eking its way closer to the car. There's a reason for that, because we probably will put it on the car. But if you'll notice, there's a second unit down there and it's just in the corner of the shot and it's there for a reason. That's to stave off the comments of this doesn't work. That's version one, it used the exact same motor as version two used and we made 650 horsepower with it and pushed this 3,500 pound beast to mid tens at 127 miles an hour. It works. The question is, is version two gonna work just as well or hopefully better? My big thing is, let's see if the VESC stands up and let's see if the belt drive holds up. Everything's all set. It's seeing 60 volts. Well, a little bit over actually. And uh, we have it set to 170 motor amps, uh, 120 battery amps, and an absolute max current of 300 amps. Let's switch to real time view and give her some gas. All right, gotta keep an eye on everything because if the current starts going haywire, I gotta pull it real fast. I also have my handy dandy fire extinguisher right here. And this time, I'm smart enough to know to hit the battery cut off rather than trying to put out a plasma arc with that. All right, let's do it. Have not tried this yet, this is the first time. Things could go really wrong. Well, that seemed to work just fine. Let's stop the real-time data. Let me take a look. I saw only like four kilowatts. It's really not all that impressive, to be honest with you, but that's okay. Current-wise, we were capping out both on current in actually was really low. So the big thing is the current motor is, it's only hitting like 50%, not even 50% duty cycle. So let's up the motor current like a lot and let's see what happens. Now I've written the changes. It's 260 motor amps, 360 absolute amps and 120 battery current max. Let's go to the real time data and let's hit the throttle. So the VESC saw a fault and it saw a fault at 260, well, 270 amps. Not sure why. All right, I think it's because it hit the battery current max limit. So I've raised that to 200 amps. So we're at 260 motor amps, 360 absolute amps, 200 battery current amps max. Go to real-time data. Let's try her again. I love the fact that it threw a fault code instead of blowing up. That's a step in the right direction. <laughs> Last time I tried this, I almost burned my house down. All right, let's give it some juice and see what happens. All right, I think what's going on here, because we had a similar problem, and our battery amps were like 130. Looks like there's some spiking going on. Let's take a look, see, and see if we can figure out what the dealio is. I'm going to up the battery current to 220 amps. 
Let's pull back on the motor current. Let's go to 220 and let's write that. All right, let's go back to real time data. Got a little spiky there. We got to keep an eye on that. All right, let's try it again. That was an improvement. Current's a little wavy, but there's not any huge massive spikes. Looks like it hit its motor current limit and just sat there. Let's go back and raise the motor current to 240 amps. We're still not pulling any real power, but I'll tell you, in here, it's deafening. All right, we've written that down. Let's go back to real-time data, and let's see if we can pick it up. Hit a fault. Yeah, the current starts to ripple pretty severely. And honestly, I don't know why. It's got a massive capacitor bank. We're not coming anywhere close to what we've seen out of that motor. Um, it seems to be a problem right around 120 battery amps. I honestly have no idea. Let's take a look one more time. Let's see where it starts going screwy. Let's run it one more time. Nice thing is the VESC resets itself. That time I stopped it because I noticed the current was spiking. I have, there's really no reason for that. Those batteries are, <laughs> it's like they took Viagra, they're stiff. Voltage was holding, like we dropped like 1.2 volts. Those LTOs are beasts. I really don't know. Um, there is no reason for it to get all spiky like that. That seems to me like there needs to be some sort of adjustment made, and I'm not really interested in blowing this thing up. If you guys have any ideas, I'm kind of all ears, uh, because we know that that motor on the second unit can make 6 PSI on a 365 cubic inch, 500 horsepower engine, but we're hitting like about half of the power level we saw before before this current starts getting spiky. I don't know why it would. It, it honestly doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. So again, if you have any ideas, post them down in the comments below. I appreciate your inputs. This is a team effort, uh, you know, all for one and one for all and all that great stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. Please take the time to uh, comment and subscribe and I will catch you all on the next one. Just playing it safe, people, just playing it safe.